In India, India is a very religious country, by the way, right? Very religious country, very superstitious country. There's temples all over the place. Some of these temples are thousands of years old. And because of what they are, they're very revered. A lot of people want to go see that, right? Architectural marble. We built that shit before Twitter was around. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and people still found it, you know? No hashtags involved. It's incredible. So people decided, once people started flocking to it, well, we could probably make money off those dumbasses. You know what I mean? And that's what they did. And I have a problem with this. And we had to learn about this stuff the hard way, you know? We went to some of these temples, because my wife loves them. She loves going to temples, you know? She's far more spiritual of a person than I am. I'm, I, I grew up Hindu. I'm not Hindu anymore. I'm an agnostic, which basically means that I'm an atheist that wants God to show the work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're omnipotent, do the math. <laughs> One of these temples we went to was uh, the Mahalakshmi Temple in Bombay, which is a relatively famous temple. Uh, and Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth. It's kind of a vague term, isn't it? Wealth? Yeah, a little bit of a vague term. You could be wealthy in a lot of different things. You, know, you could be wealthy in friends. You could be wealthy in comic books. You could be wealthy in cats. <laughs> <laughs> Some people might call it detriment, but to each their own. You know, I'm not here to judge. That's God's job to do. So. <laughs> but usually when we're talking about wealth, we're talking about one thing, right? Money. So for all intents and purposes, India has a goddess of money. Is that interesting? Right? Here in America, we worship money. But we don't have like a god or a temple built to it. We just have the Fed. <laughs> you know what the Fed does? <laughs> The Fed prints and sells money to banks who then sell it to us with interest. Yeah, they print and sell money to banks. I'm going to be quiet so your brain can catch up with that level of hypocrisy. <laughs> How do you buy money? Oh, with more money? What the fuck? <laughs> Isn't that just proof that the American economy is run on imagination? <laughs> bigger proof that the American economy has a shitty imagination. <laughs> I, I don't find it surprising at all that organized religion and capitalism work hand in hand with each other. You know, they're basically run by the same imaginative shit. You know, the invisible hand of God and the invisible hand of the free market have been jerking each other off. <laughs> leaving all of us to clean up their mess. <laughs> That's not the dirtiest joke you're going to hear tonight. <laughs> I, you know, I don't find it ironic at all that uh, American currency has the words in God we trust on it, and on the other side, all the presidents that were owned by the money. <laughs> that joke kills in Canada, you guys. <laughs> right? Canadians are like, fuck yeah. Americans are like, oh, fuck, it's too real. <laughs> How do you pay credit? That's so much worse. God damn it. <laughs> it's where we went, man. I used to go to this temple when I was a kid, right? The Mahalakshmi Temple. I used to go there when I was a kid. My sister and I nicknamed it the Beach Temple because it was right next to the beach. We were not very clever. <laughs> but that's how our parents used to get us to go to the temple, right? They'd be like, hey, you want to go see God? We're like, no. <laughs> Why? They're like, you want to go see a force of nature? I'm like, fuck yeah, that sounds awesome! Why don't you open with that? You buried the lead. That sounds incredible. <laughs> They're like, well, we gotta go see God first. I'm like, Shit. <laughs> Fine, I'll get my shoes. And when we used to go, there always used to be some people selling some things outside the temple, right? But, but these were people that lived on the temple ground and were trying to foster a community around the temple. And what they were selling were darshan plates, offering plates, as it were, right? And these people made them. They put a flower, some coconuts, some fruits, uh, maybe a dessert or something. And the idea is that you buy this and then you offer it to the Lord, right? That's what you have to do. You have to offer something to the Lord in order to ask for something in return. That's how Hinduism works, right? It's, it's kind of like a negotiation. It's very similar to the mafia. <laughs> It's like organized religion, organized crime, yeah, not a lot of difference. Yeah. 
But usually when we did this, when we bought these darshan plates, we felt okay about it, you know? Because we were helping the people that lived in the community. We were helping people foster a community surrounding the temple, right? Helping each other out. And, that, and that's what we wanted to do. We were okay with that. But now, after seven years, they are trying to sell you everything under the sun outside this temple. Look, I don't need a new cell phone plan before I visited the deity. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is this cell phone going to help me get closer to God? No, it's just going to drop calls inconveniently. Then I don't fucking need it! <laughs> Isn't that a weird thought? To sell shit outside of a religious institution? It's kind of a weird thought, isn't it? Wouldn't it be strange if you went to church on Sunday and outside there was a Walmart rep? <laughs> no, condoms, five dollars. Condoms, five dollars. Condoms, five dollars. I mean, sure, the Catholics could use it. <laughs> It'd be kind of weird. It'd be kind of weird if in the middle of the, the sermon, the priest stood up and was just like, hey, I just want everybody to know that today's Word of the Lord is sponsored by Colgate. <laughs> we want your teeth to be as white as the Jesus we want you to believe in. <laughs> We fought through all of these salespeople, right? And we finally make it up to the stairs of the temple, and we have to take our shoes off. You have to take your shoes off in order to go into a Hindu temple. You know, you don't want to drag any dirt or mud into uh, God's house. God just vacuumed. Don't be rude. <laughs> <coughs> so we took our shoes off, and we left it with this old beggar woman, and she gave us a token. We're like, fingers crossed, we'll get this shit back. Right? <laughs> We went up the stairs, and we were immediately thrown into security. And I was like, what the hell just happened? I thought I was coming to the temple. Now it feels like I'm at the airport. <laughs> Everything feels very similar, right? I don't have shoes on, being touched inappropriately. Not one person has offered me peanuts. Not one! <laughs> bullshit. I had a backpack on, and inside my backpack I had a spare set of sandals for my wife, right? Just in case she wanted to change into sandals. And they looked at me, the security people, and they said, Don't, you can't take that into the temple. You can't take any footwear into the temple. And I was like, well, what do you want me to do with it? And they said, why don't you take it out, set it by the security station, and it'll be safe there. You go in, you do your business, you get, and then you come back, you grab your sandals, and then you get out of here. And I was like, great, let's do that. And I set it by the security station, and into the temple we went, and everything inside this temple is covered in gold. Everything is covered in gold. The shrine is covered in gold. The deity is covered in gold. The railings are covered in gold. Because, you know, wealth! <laughs> and they're like, did you forget? And we're like, how could we? <laughs> Literally haven't shut up about it since we walked through the door. Now it would be like if you went to your friend's house for dinner. But the only thing they kept doing is walking you past the one mantle with the one award they won in high school. <laughs> And you're like, Scholar, we get it. Like, you were super awesome at shot put when you were 17. Where is the food? <laughs> we're all so hungry. So we walked around and we finally, you know, went up to see Lakshmi. And we uh, well, got into lines. And then we were broken up into gendered lines. Right? There was one line for women and one line for men. Because God hates fun. So, <laughs> what if our naughty bits touched while we were waiting in line? <laughs> we would have left them by the door if we could have, you know? <laughs> kind of a design flaw if you ask me, right? <laughs> the real reason why they do it is to uh, prevent like inappropriate touching, groping, sexual assault, that sort of stuff. Which is a bizarre thought to me, isn't it? Isn't that a bizarre thought? I don't know anybody that's getting hot and bothered by divinity, right? I don't know anybody that's waiting in these lines going, I can't finish unless I know there's omnipotence! <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to finish. <laughs> now, I'm watching this priest very carefully. You know, it's the middle of the day, right? And the people that are at the temple right now are not rich people. 
They are working class people, right? Average working class people, low to middle income people that spent their hard earned money to be there. You know, they had to spend their hard earned money on the darshan plate. And in order to be there, they either had to take a half day from work or a full day from work, right? So I'm watching what this priest is doing. What he does is he, they, you know, they, the people give him the darshan plate and he does a little mantra. He throws the flower over the deity. He blesses the food. The food goes back to the people. And then there's a donation box, right? And you have to put money into the donation box, right? But you, you don't have to put money into the donation box, but you have to put money into the donation box. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they do, right? And the second, the second that their fingers leave that bill, the priest is like, all right, fucking next. <laughs> what kind of fast food darshan is this shit? Or is this like the KFC of Hinduism? What the fuck? <laughs> So I'm waiting in line, right? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get the financial transaction of this interaction done first, you know? Because I'm trying to have a spiritual experience. I'm trying to be more open-minded for my wife. It's been seven years since I've been here, right? I want to I want to try to see if something happens, right? You know, I'm, I'm trying to be good. So I wanted to get the business end out of it first so that I can have my time with the Lord, right? So I walk up and I put the money into the donation till first. Big mistake. Because the second that my fingers left that bill, the priest was like, all right, move along, move along, move along. You gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. He's like, bro, who is here right now? Right? There's no one fucking behind me. You know, this is ridiculous. Let me, let me have a couple minutes with the Lord, right? Let me make eye contact with the Lord. Maybe she'll wink at me. This will be a completely different show. <laughs> Just be up here going, guys, I gotta tell you about the word of the Lord. <laughs> It is sponsored by Colgate. <laughs> Let me talk to her for a few minutes, right? Let me look at her and be like, hey, how's it going? I know we've always kind of had a difficult relationship, you know, with the whole, like, I don't think you're real kind of a thing. But I feel like a lot of that is on you. <laughs> for providing, like, no evidence. So, I feel like I'm giving a lot, not getting anything in return. <laughs> So how are you? <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. Uh, if you're the goddess of wealth and you have like all of the wealth in the whole universe, how come you don't help out poor people? And then I would get kicked out of India. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had this weird experience. My wife and I are sitting under this tree. And my wife keeps going, you know, I don't think God is here. I don't feel the presence of God here. I don't think God is here. And I looked at her and I said, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to my wife, right? She's like, let's get out of here. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Let's, let's get out of here. You know, we'll go get some lunch. We'll go do something more fun. We'll go to the science center. We'll see some real shit. <laughs> That's legitimately the best that joke's ever done. <laughs> you know, a lot of people look at me and they go, why is the science center so much fun? <laughs> they hold like a slat or some shit in there, you know? They sell Skittles at the gift store now? What's going on? <laughs> so I walk over and I grab, uh, I'm going over to grab the sandals from the security station, right? And I walk over to the security station and I'm looking up and I'm looking down and I'm looking all over the place and they're gone. My wife's sandals are missing. Someone stole oh. my wife's sandals. So I turned to the security people and I was like, hey, I think someone stole my wife's sandals. And the security person was like, oh my gosh, who do you think gives a shit? Who cares? <laughs> Why are you talking to us? <laughs> Which makes sense. It makes sense because in India, I'm just another brown guy, right? Like I am literally one in a billion over there. <laughs> you know, and then they turned around and saw my white wife and they were like, oh, Lee, shit, we gotta find those fucking sandals! <laughs> and everybody involved, it's a code white! <laughs> it is a code white! No, it's a real one, Sanjay, okay? It's a, it's a real code white. She's gonna stop spending money here! And worse yet, she might write us a bad Yelp review. <laughs> I heard, no, I heard they do that. I saw it on the TV, so it's gotta be true. 
So now this entire security staff is running around the temple looking for my wife's sandals, and they go so far as to call the cop on duty, who comes over, and he goes, let me get a statement from you. And I was like, this is all wonderful theater everybody's putting on for us right now. <laughs> right? And he's like, give me your phone number. I'll call you if something turns up. And I was like, I'm sure you're winning lots of awards for your performance, officer. <laughs> I really feel like you care. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but this cop said one thing that kind of stuck with me, right? He kept saying this one phrase over and over again. He kept saying, I mean, who would do this so close to the presence of God? I mean, really, who's going to take something from somebody else so close to the presence of God? I mean, come on. Who is going to take something that doesn't belong to them so close to the presence of God? And I was like, oh, you mean like the priest? <laughs> Stealing money from poor people with his express darshan bullshit. <laughs> Maybe you should go see how many fucking sandals he's got back there. <laughs> Just dipping them in gold. <laughs> we had this awful, disappointing experience at this temple, and we're walking down the steps. We didn't even get to see the beach, which is awful. We're getting our, we had to go get our shoes from the old beggar woman. We're not even expecting them to be there, right? We walk up to her, we hand her the token, she hands us our shoes back, and I look at her and I say, How much do you want for watching the shoes? And she goes, whatever you feel is right. So I gave her some money, and if I'm being honest, I should have given her a little bit more. You know, I should have given her a little bit more money. And I'm putting on my shoes, and I had this realization. Holy shit. This is the person that we should have hung out with the entire time. Mm -hmm. How did we fucking waste our time going up into that temple? This is the wealthiest person here. Not in terms of money. But in terms of honesty and integrity, mm -hmm. she's the wealthiest person here. She's the only person that did what she said she was going to do. She said she was going to watch our shoes, and she fucking did it. And she didn't even know she was going to get money for it. She's working on donations, you know? She, and she didn't have to wash our shoes. She could have just taken all of the shoes she had, moved three feet down, and opened up her own fucking football. <laughs> And she doesn't make a lot of money, very little money, but I guarantee you that whatever money she makes, she goes home and she shares it with her family and the rest of her community. The people up in that temple, they have no interest in sharing that wealth. They want to hoard it all. They want to keep it all back there. That's why they have those lines. That's why they have that security. That's why they want you out of there as quickly as possible. They have no interest in sharing that shit. I always find it funny when people complain about the poor, you know? People always come out and complain about the poor to me. Be careful about the poor, Christians. They'll take your shit. They're coming for it. They're going to come take your shit. I don't think it's the poor we need to be worried about, my friends. I think it's the fucking rich. Yeah! <laughs> they got a little dick, and now they want it all. That's the problem with greed, right? It's unending, but we can fight it. I should have hung out with her. Should have learned her story, where she came from. What her life is about. Why is she here? I should have been with her the whole time. And I felt terrible about myself because I judged this woman on the way up the stairs. I judged her and I felt awful. And I wanted to share all of these thoughts with my wife, right? And I went over and I grabbed her hand. And at that very moment, we saw a little boy kick a cat in the butt. And we were like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs>